if you went back to central office and I don't know if you ever would, what would you change about what you did? And I know the email is one of them, obviously you want to be maybe bombarding maybe yeah. as much as you used to what, like now that you have the perspectives on both sides, if you went back to central office, what, what do you think you'd, what, what would be a, maybe a different approach that you would take that you, that you didn't do necessarily before? I think I spent several years having focus group with teachers. So we had curriculum leadership meetings with math teachers, science teachers. And I think I did a really good job of having focus groups with teachers. We also had monthly principal meetings in different districts I've worked in. So I feel like I connected well with principals. But in my current role as assistant principal, sometimes that's a in-between role that gets overlooked. And if an assistant principal is supposed to go observe teaching and learning and, and, you know, give teacher evaluations, coach teachers, coach rookie teachers, they need to know what the curriculum priorities are and they need to know what's going on when we make changes in education. So I think quite often assistant principals in some districts get left out of the communication loop. And really the principal's not the only one doing the evaluation, but right. the principal gets monthly meetings with the superintendent and monthly meetings with their director. So I would I would have more focus groups with assistant principals because they are they're right there in the center of the action. And I think we could learn a lot from the perspective of assistant principals. And looking back on it, that was a perspective that unintentionally I often overlook. I just thought, well, the principal is the voice of the admin team. We have a monthly principal right. meeting. So I would I would focus more on focus groups with that group. And certainly I think all school districts should have focus groups of teachers. That's something I did well, but a lot of districts don't have focus groups with teachers. Somebody in the central office writes all the curriculum or they right. buy all the curriculum and no one ever asks the teachers, what do you really need? Right. And then it's like, surprise, <laughs> surprise. Yeah. Right. So I, yeah, I, I, I appreciate it. I think that, you know, having those conversations, you know, getting that feedback. And I think it's, I think part of it too is it's not necessarily feedback, but when you ask people, um, their opinions, and then you implement them, they feel ownership because yeah. if you act upon their feedback and they have ownership and then it doesn't work, they want it to work because they, 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 they see their input in that space. Whereas if I didn't actually have any input and do, I, I don't really care as much, right? It's like, well, this is a central yeah. office. I don't really care. So, um, I'd you, like to talk on that for just a second, sure, go for it. Or, yeah. probably first, 20 years of my career, I focused on buy-in. That was a term we always heard. You got to right. get teacher buy-in. If you don't get teacher buy-in, the initiative will fail. So I spent 20 years focusing on buy-in. You can read some of my articles I write for Teach Better. And some of my articles recently are st starting to talk more about collective commitment. It's not a term I created, but over time, I've realized what you just said. If there's a collective commitment to we're going to implement X, then everybody on the team at the third grade level is probably more locked into committing to doing that behavior. So I like now to talk more about collective commitments versus buy-in because I spent a long, and that's how the educational research when I was coming up through the ranks said, you need to get buy-in. So I still try to get buy-in, but then I tried to get a collective commitment, whether it's the end of the meeting or the end of three meetings, because mm -hmm. without any commitment, we're just hoping for, for a change. And we can't do that with student lives. 